Hi there, Simon from simonwoods.com. Uh, I have five uh, Piemonte Reds here, and uh, I've just spent about uh, five minutes thinking, oh, shall I do that one first, shall I do that one first? Uh, because I've got um, two and a half Barberas, one and a half Nebbiolos, and a Dolcetto. Uh, the Dolcetto to start with was um, a reasonably easy choice. It's the youngest, and uh, well, there's a couple from 2013, but uh, I'll do that one, and then um, whether I've got the rest in the right order... Uh, I've just shoved them in vintage order, and uh, it may be the right order, it may not be the right order. With only one way to find out, by digging in. Uh, so the first one, uh, it's La Torricella, that's the winery, uh, Dolcetto d'Alba Dosso. Um, and I don't know whether Dosso is the name of a vineyard or a cuvee or what, but um, I, I'm sure I'll put something up either on the screen or a link on my website uh, where you can read all the tasting notes and um, find out much more about the wine and um, and then you don't have to listen to me quite as much. I know you love listening to me. Anyway, back to the wine. The red berry and herb crunchiness about this. Uh, some dolcettos are really, uh, I mean, this feels like a, one, a dolcetto on the weightier end, 13%. Yeah, there are some of them that are quite a bit lower uh, in alcohol and have this um, much more of the crunch about them. Uh, and basically, they, they have the crunch because they've been picked to... Um, oh, they'd be overcropped and uh, picked too early. But here, it still with the um, with the 13% alcohol, it feels like there's going to be an earthy freshness about the wine. Uh, the fruit's not gone uh, too uh, far into cooked fruit or anything like that. There's this red berry and slight red cherry freshness. Yum 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 yum. Uh, that's the sort of wine that I call it Italy's Beaujolais, if you want. There is this crunchiness. There's this gluggability. Um, there's this general depth of fruit uh, and this earthiness to uh, clean up the finish and um, the sort of wine that you want to sit down and polish off quite a bit it's not one of those that you want to linger over too too long there are layers beyond the uh, immediate fruit fruitiness and uh, there is this slight uh, candied edge to the uh, uh, to, to the red berry fruit as well but um, I just like it for its um, honest earthy goodness Next one, uh, still in 2013, but uh, this is a, a Langi red, uh, from Ville de Ladri, 2013, um, and uh, the blend here, Nebbiolo and Barbera. Uh, I don't know whether it's a 50-50 blend, but um, anyway, let's just dig in. It's lighter in colour, and it feels like it's probably going to be, um, it's strange, it's going to have a bit more tannin, but also be lighter in body. But what it has got more of, it's got more uh, layers beyond the fruit. So it's got the a little bit of the, the red berry and black cherry, uh, but also it's got this like an iron tinge to it, a little bit of spice and a little bit of perfume, things like um, a floral uh, characters, maybe a bit of roses in there. And the Nebbiolo comes through in the uh, the, the perfumed edge. And also the tannins. So you're left with this uh, uh, this finish that's that speaks of uh, tannin and acidity. Uh, but then the fruit round it, um, it's got this suppleness about it. So I think there's, there's a little bit of the um, uh, that, that's where the Barbera comes in with that slightly weightier berry fruit uh, rather than the slightly ethereal uh, cherry edge of uh, uh, that I think of more as being the Nebbiolo. Um, it's, 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 it tastes more of uh, Barbera, but structure-wise, it's got Nebbiolo, and the perfume is, is Nebbiolo. I like the blend, and um, I, I, I think it works nicely. It's, a, uh, it's strange, similar alcohol to uh, uh, the previous one, same vintage, but uh, quite a different wine. And, and uh, the first one is maybe uh, the Honest... Uh, earthy midday midweek sausage wine this one maybe has a little bit more um layers and nuances but uh, i probably like them about as much as each other i i, I think the dolcetto is really good i think this is a good idea but i think that they've done yeah i probably prefer the dolcetto it's one it's funny these two wines i'll probably taste them side by side and say no i prefer that one no i prefer that one trust your first impression simon i think the dolcetto is better but not by much. Next one. Uh, so the next two are Barbera. Uh, are they both Barbera Dasty? Uh, yes, they are. So first one is a Renato Ratti's uh, 2012 Barbera Dasty Battaglione. And a picture of someone on the front who looks slightly Napoleonic. But uh, anyway, let's try the wine. 
Well, there's an honest, hearty, earthy meatiness about this. Um, and uh, it smells like it's going to have quite a lot of fruit, uh, quite a lot of power to it. Uh, Barbera is not, uh, it doesn't have the tannins that, uh, that Nebbiolo does. So if, if you want to build structure in the wine, maybe you have to do a little bit more uh, pressing of the grapes. Uh, and it feels like, uh, yeah, they, they've done that, but it doesn't feel like they've gone over the top in extraction. I think of uh, Barbera having this sweet puddingy fruit, uh, summer pudding type of character. So the Mulbridge, a little bit of the cooked uh, berries, red berries and, and, and dark berries um, and something like cranberry in there to, to give it a crunch. But um, um, uh, yeah, a bit, bit of violet in there as well. Um, but this soft smoothness uh, and juicy friend. Barbera is probably the friendliest of, um, of, of these three grapes. They, they Dolcetto, Nebbiolo and, uh, and Barbera. Uh, yeah, yeah, Dolcetto, Nebbiolo, Barbera. Barbera is is the one that is the it's slightly uh, larger. Maybe it's not as uh, finely chiselled as Nebbiolo, um, and uh, maybe not as sinewy as, as Dolcetto. But it's the one that um, everybody likes. It's friendly and it's it's sort of hey. And yeah, you can tart it up a little bit, but uh, I think it's uh, it's um, its role is to make the jocular friendly wine, and that is certainly what this is. I like that. Let's see where I like the second one uh, from Barbera d'Asti. So this is Franco Mondo, uh, Vigna del Salice, um, Barbera d'Asti Superiore, um, and it's a year older than the previous one. Uh, let's give this one a whirl. Well, one of the things I, I, I see as a difference between these two, and uh, this is where I might be uh, completely wrong, uh, this one has more of the imprint of New Oak. Uh, the previous one, I have a suspicion, would have been aged in rather uh, large, old wooden vats. Here, there's something of the vanilla um, edge and a slight oaky smokiness of, of, of new oak. Uh, the fruit behind, again, is this um, juicy, plump, uh, user-friendly, for want of a better term, um, plush berry and a little bit of um, a little bit of undergrowth in there as well. And that vanilla comes through really strongly when you taste it. Too dominant. Um, certainly, I notice um, uh, some of the wood tannins here, and um, uh, I have slight concern whether the, it, 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 I mean, the fruit is, is juicy, rounded, and ripe, but whether um, the fruit justified quite that much um, uh, that much oak treatment. Um, it's uh, no, it doesn't say too much on the on the back label. I like it, but I think the uh, the previous one has much more of a. It's it's not the previous one's not as loud as this one, uh, but it seemed to have a um, gentle confidence. Here, it's just that little bit too showy. Um, it's a bit over friendly. I do. I, I think it's going. I'm very interested to see how it develops. I'll, I'll, I'm tasting this with some people in about. Uh, three hours time. So I'll be interested to see wh what's happened to it, whether it's emerged and uh, that uh, the, the oakiness has stayed the same and the wine has grown round it or whether that uh, vanilla imprint and that slight green edge of oak um, do um, always remain a problem. Mm. Final wine, 100% uh, Nebbiolo um, from Carema, um, not the best known 100% um, Nebbiolo, uh, Dio is it DOCG? Uh, no, it's just DOC. Um, uh, of course, Barolo and Barbaresco are the uh, kings of Nebbiolo. Uh, let's see whether this is a um, pretender to the crown. And you probably can't see against my dark top, but uh, this is the palest of the um, uh, of the wines. Uh, I stick my nose in there, and it's 2008. We've gone from uh, 2011. This is three years older. And um, there's a little bit of um, what I call the consomme about it. It feels like it's a wine that's, that is mat more mature, uh, but has maybe gone a little bit too far. Let's taste it and see. But then when you taste it, it's, um, it gets confusing. Um, it seems the more I've, I've had a couple of sips of it and um, it seems to be growing. Uh, so, yes, there is the mature edge. Uh, that slightly leathery, meaty, uh, cooked strawberry character. Um, and there's the classic Nebbiolo tannins to uh, uh, to sort of fur up your palate and uh, and make you think, I need some protein. But um, uh, in terms of fragrance, some of those, the, the fragrant edges that I missed when I, I smelt it for the first time, um, they're starting to grow. You're getting this little a bit of the floral uh, character coming through. Um, and... Um, 
a wine I find slightly confusing at the moment, and I, I think that they, this is one that um, is slowly unravelling, and um, it's, been, it's the one that's been in a bottle longer, so it may be that it just sort of needs long, you know, if you've been on the coach journey for a long time, and you've been in the strange position, and uh, you, you, the longer you've been on there, the more time it takes you to uh, actually uh, get back into uh, uh, the the, uh, the shape you're supposed to be in. Yeah, it, it's slowly, do, it's doing that in front of my eyes, so I'll keep an eye on this. I will report back. Um, I, I, yeah, I, I, the flavours I'm left with, I, I, I do quite like. Um, I, so at the moment, I like the, my favourites are probably the uh, uh, the Dolcetto and the the first Barbera. But uh, I wouldn't be surprised if this one uh, creeps up and um, sneaks into certainly uh, uh, the top three and maybe even higher up that pecking order. Hey, see you soon.